So I'm Tom. I'm one of the core contributors to Nano. Uh, Nano is a open source creative coding framework, completely written in Rust. Um, <coughs> so, what is a creative coding framework? You all know what Rust is, and hopefully not open source. So the way I like to think about a creative coding framework is kind of like a game engine, except so you've got Unity or something like that, or Unreal Engine. Normally, you're, when you have a game engine, you're writing for a screen, maybe a controller, some speakers. That's kind of your whole medium. With a creative coding framework, you, you're extending those mediums out. So we've got we've done laser shows, done LED walls. This was a multi-channel audio thing. It's still running at um, Melbourne Museum. It's 100 channels of audio. And then when the sound moves across in this virtual space, you can hear it come through all the different speakers. Um, motion tracking. So is that, 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 yep. is that in Rust? This is all in Rust. This is all in Rust. Um, yeah. This one. No, this one, I think they're going to keep running. Well, they said 14 years, but they just keep using it. We haven't had any crash reports, which is insane. <laughs> like, literally not. If I get time, I'll tell a story about when we developed it, though, which is different. <laughs> <laughs> um, ray marching is one of my favorite things. It's when you, you write. So that's, we wrote the engine in Rust or in Nano, but the, that's like shader code. So that runs on the GPU. You do this weird math stuff that gives you like these insane shapes. It's really quite fun. Um, so yeah, you just you have all these different mediums. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. I mean, the people I work with really love lasers. So <laughs> they've already got a laser back end on there before we even got video, which is good. <laughs> Another reason why you might want to create a coding framework. I think this is like overlooked. When you're learning a new language or you know learning to program at all, it's way more fun if you've got some sort of visual feedback. So something that you might not want to do when you learn to code is like, I don't know, like I did in school, I'm trying to think of one of the programming exercises that give us like, oh yeah, like the mazes. The mazes is probably actually the funnest thing we get, make a maze, but it was all completely abstract. You couldn't see it. You're lucky if you got like an ASCII output of it. You know, like not, not that like engaging. With, with Nano, you can take something simple like this Rust loop, Maybe you're trying to teach what modulus does. Just assign it to some colors and then draw out some circles. You get this like feedback that it's going. And I think the key there is that you're actually playing with the code rather than just following a recipe and seeing, like, well, how does this actually work? All right, I finally got something working. We're really about play, play with it, you know, have some fun. <laughs> so, some people might be familiar with some other frameworks that exist, like why the hell did we rewrite this in Rust? That's a stupid question. Of course we're going to rewrite it in Rust. <laughs> but the main, the, the two sort of like other frameworks out there is processing, which some people may have used. It's basically a Java, I think that JavaScript now as well, and I guess saw R the other day, which was really weird. Um, processing is great. That's where I learned to code. I love processing, nothing wrong with it. You can get up and going in processing really quickly. The thing with processing though, is if you try and like, for instance, run three giant lasers running like audio, like heaps of audio channels and, and some motion tracking cameras and maybe a 3D model and someone moves, it's gotta like all happen in real time. Like just good luck, like it's not gonna happen. So, you're like, all right, we'll use Open Frameworks, which is a C++ sort of um, coding, coding framework. I've used Open Frameworks, also great. Heaps of packages in there. It's C++, though. so you don't have a package manager. You've got a lot of different people writing um, sort of like add-ons to it. I, I have this memory that comes back from one of the earliest museum things we did. With, uh, with Open Frameworks, and I had a GUI, and it had an event loop in it, 
And then we had a main app that had an event loop in it. And they're like, out of sync. And there was some weird bug where this one didn't get to there in time. And then it didn't get back in time. And I was like, what is going on? Like, everything's mutable. Everything's pointing to each other. It was scary. Actually, like, I think everything, <laughs> yeah, like spaghetti in a shredder. <laughs> I think that everything ends up a spaghetti if it gets big enough. Like, I don't think you can avoid it. But at least in Rust, you can kind of like keep the spaghetti like this or something. Um, you know, like, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but Rust is fast. And it's quite reliable. Like I said, we haven't had any crashes that they've told us about. And, Probably have had crashes, but if they haven't bothered to tell us, then it can't be that bad. Um, and both like with that reliable thing, everyone talks about fighting the compiler and the borrow checker, and that's totally how I felt when I first started. But I feel like our, our relationship has gotten to a point where we started to talk. And like <laughs> that's that's real nuts. <laughs> Like that's that's a totally different thing. It's like instead of just swearing at it. Instead of just swearing at it. You like calm down a bit and it's like, hey. And also they've changed the errors now and they're like they're like way more polite, which is really cool. And like, hey, maybe just try this. You're like, hmm, I am an idiot. I'll try that. So that's really cool. And it, it makes you write better code. It's it's just trying to help you. It's like, hey, go over here, maybe that's better. So we've got cargo, like, how great is that? I just write down my dependencies. They just work. I take it over to Linux, it just works. It's insane. Like, how does that happen? Um, so we're MIT licensed. You can use it for all your evil plans. Open source on GitHub. We recently released a new version with Vulkan backend, um, <coughs> which is instead of OpenGL, which is like your standard like renderer for 3D graphics, we just ripped that out and threw it away and put in Vulkan, which I don't know, I still have anxiety about this to this day. But yeah, that's kind of the future of graphics, according to hopefully <laughs> the right people. But I think that Vulkan has a lot in common with Rust. It's kind of like OpenGL is C, where you have all this magic. You like call something and you've got all this global state, and you're like, all right, I hope I did that in the right order. And then it runs, and then you run it like 20 times, and then your screen goes black, and you're like, oh, what happened? Vulcan's like the opposite. You have all this explicit stuff you have to write out, and you're like, holy shit, I just wrote a triangle, and it was like this much code. But I think it might be good in a really, really twisted way, because... <laughs> Do you have we, to write that much to write Vulcan to write now? Well, you don't have to touch Vulcan. That's kind of where I, what I have to do. Um, so yeah, we've, well, I wouldn't, it's not all, not all us. We're using a library called Volcano, which is another Rust library. It's kind of wrapped around the, um, the raw C bindings. I think there's another one coming up called Rendy, which I've been really interested in because they want to use, they want to use graphs to kind of like line everything up perfectly. I'm like, yes, do that. I don't want to think about anything anymore. Just put in a graph. Um, yeah, so I thought, I kind of looked at this talk and was like, I'm going to do it really fast. So that's all the slides I have, but maybe I'll take some questions or something. Like, also, this is our question. Yeah. Um, oh, and you have a Slack channel. Yeah, we have a Slack channel. We're always pretty much on there. We don't have lives. How did your Creighton Slack channel come about? Like, how did you start it? Stuff. I think you get, you kind of get this reaction. You get people come on the Slack channel and they're like, hey, I'm really interested in this project. Like, I'm coming from Open Frameworks. Like, what's going on here? Help. Like, what is going on? And like, we've got the Rust book, we've got all these great things that we're trying to like, push them towards. It's, I'm not going to lie, it's a challenge. Like, I mean, everyone here is like a Rust developer, so it's almost pointing the same as you. But if you are new to Rust, it's not necessarily easy, but it's so worth it. Once you get over that hump, you can, like, you can start writing bigger scalable code that just works. And, it, and you're writing in patterns 
that makes sense, where you're not in this sort of free for all wild west. Right? Once you get to a certain size, unless you're a super senior senior C plus plus developer, it, I, I can't get my head around that. I really like this modern language. It's just like it's got everything you need, but it's pretty different. Yeah. Um, using Nano, yeah. how much would you say your coding style has changed? Like, is it just a drop in dependency and you just start adding it in the middle of coding oh. normally, right? Or is it like you add Nano's dependency and then your main function has to be, you know, start Nano environments, here's a bunch of states, Nano is. Yeah, so from a Rust perspective, yeah, from a yeah. user's perspective, how yeah. drop in and play, like how plug in and play. So it's totally a dependency, but we do have like a loop. So we have a main loop. Um, I've built projects that kind of wrap that. So you can get tricky with that. You don't have to do anything. Like we try and make everything optional, but if you want to use the renderer or like the audio, that loop actually has to run. I'm not sure how you would do that otherwise, but it's pretty easy in Rust as well to just spin up threads. So what I usually do is just go, all right, this stuff's all happening in my rendering thread, spin up a thread over here, and then I can use channels to talk back and forward. I haven't found it, but I might be biased because I like, you know, I kind of like that view of update and view. But yeah. I've written like all my stuff in now. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a bit biased. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, mate. I'm, I'm a new business. This may be a very simple question. That's sure. sure. Something. Something. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Nano is for manipulating images and also the uh, potential. Yep. So think about it like a toolbox. In that toolbox right now, we have 2D graphics, we have 3D graphics, we have audio, we have lasers, we have getting video like I'm working with right now. Um, it's the right Like, are you talking about the lasers? So are you? Yeah, so the lasers have their own, like, um, protocol that... DMAs. No, it's not actually DMAs, it's a proprietary protocol that this <laughs> Russian company owns and they're, like, making buy their little dust for it. So we wrote, well, I didn't write, but some of the core contributors on this wrote our own open source protocol so you can use the laser. You can just buy one and use it without having to buy their software to use lasers. Would yeah. you be able to show some examples? Yeah. Stuff? Um, totally. Was that Instagram thing making all their nano stuff? Uh, yeah, so one of our... Yeah, totally. One of our users has just made a sketch like every single day. He just makes a sketch. All right. Sweet free day. Command shift. Command shift. Yeah, so he just makes a sketch every single day. Oh, yeah, the other thing we've got. I completely forgot about, even though I wrote it, is motion tracking. So, like you, you could use a Kinect, but there's like more modern motion tracking cameras. Comes up a lot if you're trying to do interactive sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, he's he's just been making these sort of insane sketches every single day. It's not actually. It's just rendered out. So this is like sort of a decision we had to go with earlier. Like, are we going to make a wasm target eventually? Hell yeah. But there's only three of us. <laughs> like, we have to sort of make a decision. And the main priority right now is speed and reliability. Like, we pretty much been using these um, for all of our commercial work. If you want stuff to go fast, you, you have to use Rust and, and, and native code. So 
that's like a big thing to convince people. Like it's it's a it's a really good thing to convince people. Like you're, you're making like generative art projects that are going to be installations. Like this is going to be reliable. You're not going to get. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> exciting to you. It's such a hard trade-off because when you when you want to make a piece of art, you want to get out your piece of paper, or you want to pick up your guitar, and you just want to be like, I've got this idea, and we want that. We still want that with Nano, but we also want to take that little sketch and like turn it into this big interactive installation or something like that. And that's a really hard trade-off to balance. I think like if you have already built Nano, like because. Rust is not the quickest language to build. We all kind of know that. Once you've built it, though, you can start getting into that like iterative. Oh, I'm gonna make this like, happen really fast. One of the goals. I don't even know if I should probably mention this. I'll probably get in trouble. But <laughs> one of the goals that we have, like one of the other members, is really keen on, is this idea of making a nodal language on top of it. That's something we could use completely at runtime. Wouldn't have any of these issues. At Compile time stuff. Probably shouldn't have said that. But what's that rendering? What's that using now? So this is just a video. Like oh, it's just yeah. saved out. Like you can target. Yeah. Um, yeah. We haven't got any targets that run on the web yet. I'd be interested in looking at Wasm, but I I would say it would be a subset, if anything. And the problem is as well, you can only use Open uh, WebGL. You can't use like there's no such thing as Vulkan for browsers. It um, have to be some media layer. Yeah. You have you have this cool thing called Spear V, which is like someone made an intermediate language for shaders, which is like your code that runs on your graphics card, which could go that way, but it's still everything's early days. But yeah. What do you generally use to write your shaders? Is there like a thing that kind of So we have um, yeah, we have a shader back end. It's still GLSL is the language that you write in. There's someone writing RLSL, which is Rust Shader Language, as like their PhD or their insanity project. Oh. I can't wait for that. I don't understand why we have a CPU and a GPU and they can't run the same language. Like, that's insanity. But we're, we're going to get there. It's going to be good. But yeah. Any other questions? Um, I just worried about bringing up my Instagram and being like someone being like, yeah, boys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> probably, actually, I'll search. Yeah. Yeah, ironically, it's got more traffic than us. <laughs> I wonder how I get it to play. Is it all no, yeah. One of the main things I've been doing is pretty much what all of us have been doing is like helping. I think it's really important to help your early users and like give them a really good experience because they'll do something like this and just make heaps and heaps and heaps of art. But yeah. How's the um, traffic been? Yeah, so we just released this new version with Vulkan. It took like three months or something stupid, maybe longer, which is way too long to do a, an up, a version update in a Rust project. But um, it got to the front page of Hacker News last night, which was pretty fun. Got a, I think like 3,000 new views on our GitHub, which is pretty fun. People are coming on Slack being like, Oh, what is Rust? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> and maybe that's a way to look at it. It's just like yeah. a, a gateway drug. Uh, yeah. uh, no, no. <laughs> this will uh, hold the part that I know will be like a video tool, like a VR stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. That will definitely come. I mean, <laughs> one of the, so the other member who's not working on the things I've already talked about is so into VR and he's like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this stuff. <laughs> I mean, we, ha we can do 3D graphics. So like you can stick that into a into a VR project. We don't have support for yeah. Actually, I haven't tried it, so I don't know how that would work. You'd I guess have two screens rather than one, but yeah. Once I can afford one, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, other question. Yeah. Uh, 
not how do you differentiate yourself from amethyst that's a game engine yeah yeah so i think it really comes back to what i was talking about before with medium so with a game engine you're really focusing on 3d graphics or 2d graphics in the computer and some sound and like a keyboard or a controller that's kind of like your limits whereas with this we're trying to open up all those mediums that you can play with so instead of just using at one screen or like you could have a big array of led panels or like one of the things we did this year is the main stage of Pitch Festival. We had rain marching shaders. I was actually back at camp writing shaders and then like taking to the stage and being like, let's try this. And you know, seeing up and everyone's too drunk to care, but you're like, this looks amazing. <laughs> so that was fun. But yeah. Yeah, I'm I am the other two recently moved to Berlin. They were from Melbourne. They are from Melbourne, yeah. I guess it's a pretty obvious decision, but yeah, I like Melbourne. It's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Get on and I'm happy to, I'm always on Slack. So like if anyone wants to jump on and they've got any troubles, it could happen. Like I haven't tested every computer, but yeah, just hit us up. We're pretty active. Happy to, happy to get news on. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks.